Hi, welcome to Infusion Health, the podcast. I'm comedian Chris Patrick, a.k.a. Self-Proclaimed Power Man. And I'm here with my co-host and significant other, Rach. Hey, guys. Now, today we we got a fun show today. Um, we, we get to highlight, being an entrepreneur myself, we get to highlight um, an entrepreneur, uh, somebody who owns a shop here on 50th and Xerxes in Minneapolis, a um, shop called Vinaigrette. We got Sarah here, and she's going to tell us all about, um, they got olive oils, um, different things they can do with, um, with olive oils, different flavors and stuff like that. Uh, you, you, you got to check out the shop. So without further ado, I'm going to bring her in and we're going to talk about how she got started and um, we're going to learn a lot about olive oil. Sarah, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So tell us about Vinaigrette. How did, how did you get started um, with, with this and um, tell us about olive oil? Sure, sure. Um, interestingly enough, uh, we're almost 13, we're 13 years old. This okay, time. okay. So we've been at this location for 13 years. Um, my husband and I... Um, were fans of olive oil um, because at the time we were living in California mm-hmm. and a number of the uh, wineries are now pressing olives. At the, also at the same time, my uh, brother was in Spain studying um, in college, liked it so much, decided to stay for a little while and worked in an olive grove. So then at that time he was sending us some olive oil from Spain. Mm, mm-hmm. Nice. So, so tell me, tell me about, okay. <laughs> Put something in the reservoir. Okay, because I heard olive oil, olive oil is good for you. It is good for you. But when you cook it and you heat it up, it, it kind of, the velocity, it kind of thins out, so you're losing all the nutrients. So is it is it good to heat it up or is it good not to heat Because all the cooking shows now are like, I put EVO. I'm like, yeah, but when you heat it up, so so is that good? Is it bad? Okay, so there's a couple of things. Um, first and foremost, in the United States, there are no standards for olive oil or vinegar. Mm-hmm. Um, so... You don't necessarily know exactly what it is that you're getting. Okay. So that's the one issue. So you could have other oils in there that are going to help expedite the rancidity Mm -hmm. um, of your oil. But as far as heating it, I I equate it to carrots. Okay. So if you have a carrot and you eat it in the raw, you're going to get all the nutrients. You're going to get the best of the best of what that carrot has to offer. Right. Mm -hmm. Then you can steam it. Mm -hmm. You're going to lose some of those nutrients, but not enough. It's still better than, you know, not eating a carrot. Yeah. You can overcook those carrots into absolute mush, and you've mm-hmm. really damaged the, the nutrients in mm-hmm. that. However, it's still good for you. Yeah. Okay, so olive oil has the same kind of situation. It's going to be best for you. You're going to get all the nutrients. It's, it's in its full flavor, et cetera, mm-hmm. when it's in the raw, and it hasn't been heated. Mm-hmm. The biggest thing is, though, is a light saute is not going to damage the olive oil. You're just going to lose some of the nutrient factors. Now, as soon as it starts smoking, there then again, you might have kind of ruined everything sure. that they have, it has to offer. But it's still going to be better for you than, say, canola oil. Right. So that's that's kind of how I, uh, my take on on how to make sure that you're using your olive oil. To its to its best. So Chris left you, <laughs> kind of interrupted in your story of your brother was over there. He sent you some um, some olive oils. Yeah. Go ahead and continue your story. So, um, and my husband's sister uh, married a man from Syria, and uh, they had olive oil flowing like you would uh, wine or chocolate at most weddings. Um, so then to have that taste of the Syrian olive oil and realizing how different the tastes were. Sure. Um, my mom, uh, grew up in a small town in Wisconsin. My grandfather was a superintendent of schools. So they had an exchange program, um, with a small school in the free of County region of Italy. So the other piece is my mom's high school foreign exchange student from when she was in high school was part of a six family co-op. Okay. And so every year after harvest, we would get olive oil sent to us. So mm. I grew up with really good olive oil. Right, right. Um, yeah, and so here we were um, in Minnesota. I was staying home with our son. My husband was working. It was kind of the height of the recession. And um, we had seen a source in concept similar mm-hmm. to ours. Um, however, they sourced theirs from um, a big food retailer. Okay. Um, and we're like, well, we actually know people. Um, right. So, yeah, at the height of the recession, we're like, if we're not going to make any money, we're not going to make any money doing something that we love and here we are 13 years later. Absolutely. Yeah. One thing I look at your store and you have so many vinaigrettes and olive oils mm-hmm. from everywhere. And mm-hmm. it's so, I mean, it's, it's very interesting to walk into the store for the first time and really see that there's so many different and they taste so different from each other. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the thing that's nice about the regional olive oils is it's just like wine. It's going to depend on the, you know, soil, 
the temperatures, you know, the climate, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But the piece is, is you get to come in and you get to taste side by side to find out what it is that you actually like. Right. And, and that's the thing, too, because um, and I want to explain to listeners, too. OK, now I could come here and get olive oil, but I can also go to Cub and get the big thing for like, you know, six, nine. What, what's the difference? Well, again, because there's no standards in the United States, you, you can't guarantee that you're going to get what you're getting. Mm-hmm. If it's really interesting, my favorite place to actually look at olive oil is Target. Mm-hmm. Um, flip all of those extra virgin olive oils around. In some of them, the first ingredient is canola oil. Okay. And mixed with olive oil. But you can call it olive oil in the United States. Right. Um, <clears throat> so I think uh, knowing the source, um, mm-hmm. recognizing that there's kind of a whole lot of different things out there. I mean, celebrity olive oil alone is a multi-million dollar industry. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is kind of a little bit trendy. Um, but we have individual relationships with our growers that we can assure you're getting what it is. And your your olive oil your olive oil is in is it where's it grown at it's it's not, you you import it from um, California or? we have it all over so all over. Um, yeah. Italian um, well Italy Greece Spain Morocco Tunisia Egypt um, Lebanon, Lebanon. Um, and we've had other olive oils over time um, like we had an Israeli olive oil unfortunately we lost that we had a Syrian olive oil. And like, again, unfortunately, we lost that, but we're always looking to establish those relationships. Well, I got an interesting story because um, <laughs> I do most of the cooking at the house. And one day was where I was making something Italian and I gave everybody a little plate, cut up some basil and I put the olive oil on the plate. And my son was like, what's this? I go, you dip the bread in there because mm-hmm. they like, you know, the toasted garlic bread. I said, you dip it in there and then you eat it. I don't like this. <laughs> so then a couple of weeks later, Rachel brings home some different olive oil. I forgot what flavor it was. Next thing you know, he ate the whole bottle with bread. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, and that's just it. You don't know what you don't know. Um, and again, like our, for our balsamics, most people do not understand how great a balsamic, a balsamic, true balsamic vinegar is a vinegar that you can sip. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it shouldn't, you know. You know I love it. Love it on a salad. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. The first time I came in here, I tried the chocolate and I'm like, uh, oh, that's not really my taste. And then some, um, one of your um, workers here said, try it in um, a whipped cream. Mm-hmm. That changed it dr- dramatically for me. Mm-hmm. After that, I bought it. I Now I use it for a chocolate whipped mm-hmm. cream. Mm-hmm. It's so good. Well, I think the thing is, is I mean, unfortunately, <laughs> having a name like vinaigrette, um, it, uh, people just assume salads, mm-hmm. but um, there's so many things that you can do, um, especially with vinegars that most people don't realize. Right. Oh yeah, you can you can use it for a marinade with a, with beef or chicken or. Yep. You can take our white balsamics, make it mix it with sparkling water. My kids call it birthday pop, but it's like an Italian soda without being so syrupy sweet. Oh. Then you yeah. also have the probi- the natural probiotics that are in vinegar that age, aid in digestion, mm-hmm. uh, relieves inflammation. Um, so yeah, it's a fun way to experiment. Well, well, and also too to the listeners that when you when you come here to Vinaigrette, um, you're not just getting olive oil. You got olive oil with um, garlic. You got olive oil with different flavors. And like she said, you can try it. My only thing is, I wish you had more bread. <laughs> we did. We used to actually um, have bread for dipping um, when we came in because I thought it was mm-hmm. critical because like who could sip olive oil? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but COVID yeah. is what has pandemic. That. Yeah. Yeah. So we used to. Um, Pick up fresh bread daily um, mm-hmm. at Great Harvest and then cut it up and use it um, to help people. But So hopefully someday we'll get the okay from the health department that we can do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think it's very interesting that you said that a lot of your olive oils and vinaigrettes are having same some of the same problems that essential oils, herbs, and CBD is, which if you don't know where your source is, you might not get it mm, the best benefit for your body. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what was critical for us um, to actually have the, establish the relationships with our growers. Uh, we deal with small artisanal growers, um, a frustration that some of our customers have <laughs> loudly exclaimed is we do run out of product. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but that's the piece for us is being able to source and do for what other people are doing for us by shopping small and local. Um, we're able to do um, for farmers around the, around the world. Yeah. And, and that's the thing too. Like I said, um, there's lots of different ways you can use, you can use olive oil, you know, like, like I said about heating it up. One of the things I found when I'm making like, um, 
Mexican street tacos, you gotta, um, I put a little olive oil in it and I just do it just for the taste. And then you, um, you put the tortillas in the, in the pan and cook them in that olive oil, then put the, st- oh man, it's. <laughs> It makes all the difference. In the yeah. It really does make all the difference in the world. And especially with the fused ones, the fused olive oils that we have. So when they press the olives, they press the different ingredients with the olives, which is how you get that intense flavor and aroma. So um, like for a street taco, like a garlic, a lime mm. olive oil or an oregano olive oil, then you're going to hit all those those key key flavors that you find in, in Mexican food. Oh, and also too, when you when you when you get home and you put a little, you can chop up a little basil to it, add a little bit of fresh oregano or mint or whatever, mm-hmm. and um, throw that on a salad or mix it with like a um, mix it with like a vinaigrette or Italian dressing. You know, mm-hmm. it, it goes really good. Well, and I think the other piece that people don't realize, like I do, we do all of our French toast in vanilla olive oil. So, um, and that just again adds a, a whole level um, and layer. Um, it makes it better for you know frying mm-hmm. than. Again, either canola oil or butter or however you normally do your. And it, it doesn't stop there. I mean, I joke, we do Eggo waffles. Okay. We have three kids, it's easy. <laughs> um, you can get them for like a dollar a box. <laughs> um, but uh, so I put them in the toaster oven and then drizzle the 18 year age balsamic mm. over the top of it. And again, who would have thought? But it does. It takes it to a whole new level. Um, and you would never think you would be using vinegar on breakfast food. Yeah. And you know, also, it's um, the way you make French toast is way different than before you met me, which I think is <laughs> just a story in cinnamon itself. Bread, cinnamon bread, cinnamon <laughs> bread. He have. used to only have Texas toast. He's like, that's the only way to make it. And I said, try it with cinnamon toast. Now he buys the cinnamon toast from the farmer's market, and now he can get some vanilla <laughs> olive oil here, and that would be really good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And also, too, I want to say to the listeners that when you buy olive oil here, you bring the bottles back to refill it, so um, so you're not you're not polluting. It's not in plastic bottles. Well, so that's I think that that's the other piece for us is um, being a retailer, uh, kind of living our values. Mm-hmm. So reduce, reuse, recycle um, is critical for us. And instead of having like an incentive, you know, buy ten get one free. Well, if you bring your bottle back, I give you a ten percent discount. So you do you get you know buy mm-hmm. the tenth bottle, the tenth bottle's free. Um, we, I know how much I pay for those bottles and none of us would like throw $2 out the window. Right. right. So I don't want to see my bottle in a landfill. So right. if, you bring us our, if you bring us the bottle, we're going to give you a new bottle. Mm-hmm. Um, but you do get that 10% discount. So, so what's it like, um, being an entrepreneur, do you get like, um, you get like special things from, from the government now since, um, since COVID or stuff like that, did you get something to help to keep the business going? Well, interestingly enough, no. Um, I was de- uh, denied the first round of PPP, um, which was tough. Uh, we went through a bigger bank, um, the bigger bank that we've been using since we opened. Um, and they just said that they weren't going to be processing applications until with 50 or less employees, at least okay. for a while. Mm-hmm. Well, then the first round of PPP ran out. Um, right. In some ways, I'm kind of thankful for that because it ended up, uh, I was on National Public Okay. Um, and at a three minute segment um, that propelled us, which actually carried us uh, substantially. And I will never, ever, ever be able to thank those people that supported us or any of, the, of our customers that have supported us during mm-hmm. COVID. Um, I did through the state of Minnesota, um, I did get a $10,000 grant. Okay. Um, but again, what people don't realize, again, small business owners is I was $30,000 in back rent sure um <laughs> because we had a situation where our landlord said you know what let's just you work on the cam we'll hold off on the rent we'll figure this out uh-huh. and here we are um so yeah i owed him that money um was able to use that money for for that payback but that otherwise awesome. it, that's the piece it's, it's hard uh-huh. and especially when you're small small yeah right we're competing you know for the, for that money for those grants so yeah, absolutely hard. and that's the thing too with um like i said before as far as going you know well, why should I drive all the way to, you know, 50 Minneapolis to get olive oil when I can go to Cub? It's like, well, you're getting a much, much better olive oil. And not just that, but you're getting different flavors and different stuff in your olive oil that that makes it better. You know? Well, and I think you get to try before you buy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but the other piece I want people to realize, we deliver. Um, if one thing that COVID taught us <laughs> is that we need you um, and we do, we deliver. Um, so if it does seem like it's kind of an impossible task, mm-hmm. um, let us come out to you um, and deliver. And we don't have uh, a 
a set radius. Um, sure. We've gone to Prior Lake. We've gone to Ham Lake. We've gone to Woodbury <laughs> um, and everywhere else in between. So um, we want to get, we are proud of our product. We are honored that you would use it. So we would like to get it into your hands in any way we can. Yeah, well, I originally heard about it through um, uh, AM 950, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I, I heard the commercial, and we were driving around here one day, and I said, Let, let's go to 50th and 6th. She goes, what's it? And Rachel's like, what's it? <laughs> I said, let's go to Vinaigrette. She's like, I hear, this, <laughs> I hear they got some good olive oil, so let's go. So we were in here. We must have been in here for like an hour. Yeah, we were in here. <laughs> we were in here. I think that that's the thing that people don't realize is that they're going to have an experience, yeah. especially your first time here. Um, I feel really fortunate that we have the staff that we do and the commitment that we do from our staff to create mm-hmm. um, a fun place to come and try a few things. Or if you don't want to, you're allowed mm-hmm. to just kind of be and taste on your own in your own you know, way. But um, we have a lot of fun combinations that we like you to try. Mm-hmm. Um, we give you a lot of ideas. Um, and for anybody else, our, our phone number is on our bottle. Yeah. So that's the other piece I tell people. If you're, in your, if you're looking at your cabinet, you're like, I know they told me a hundred ways to use this and I don't mm-hmm. remember Give us a call because depending on who's going to answer the phone, it's going to have a whole nother slew of options for you. Sure, sure. And I think it's important for those introverts just to ask the questions. You know, you're you're having relatives, you know, coming out and you want to serve them something special. It sounds like your staff is extremely experienced in enough dishes to know how to use these bottles and have them go taste them and say, yeah, I want this oil or I've read that one for them. Well, we can, the other piece that we have the fortunate um, ability to do is that we can mix an oil and a vinegar in a bottle for you. So we can make a salad dressing that literally all you have to do is throw the ingredients together, shake that bottle up, and we've, we've got you covered. We also have you covered if you do, like, let's say, a lemon olive oil and a blueberry balsamic, you can use that over ice cream. Mm. Shake that up over ice cream, and it's phenomenal. And um, there's, there's just a million ways that you can actually use oil and vinegar that, that people just don't realize. Yeah, you can also, like I said, use it for a marinade. And it's not just, you know, for like, um, like sometimes if, it, if it's a flavored olive oil, I pour it like over, um, over bread and use it for like a garlic bread. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Chop up some garlic on top. <laughs> Our kids love garlic bread. <laughs> or their meats or chickens, um, beef. Yeah, yeah, totally. The, um, I, we have an ongoing battle in our household. Um, so I love the Spanish olive oil. Richard's a California olive oil. I love the garlic. He likes the Italian herb. So uh, the one thing I will have to say is a grilled cheese made with either Italian or the Italian herb or the garlic uh, olive oil will be like nothing you've ever had. Mm. Um, And has absolutely spoiled our kids for eternity. (laughs) (laughs) So that's what another question I was going to ask you. The first time Chris went to the farmer's market with his um, natural snow cones, he got so happy when little one, mm, little kids would have that. What's your happiest story? Oh, we have a million of them. I actually have to say, there's a picture actually on our Facebook that we'd have to scroll back through. Um, There was a little boy who came dressed in his uh, jester costume, um, and it was his fourth birthday. And what he wanted to do was come and pick out his own bottle of uh, vinegar in particular. Um, A number of our white balsamics literally taste like candy. So kids love them. Um, And so, yeah, to see him come in um, in his little jester costume to pick out his own very own bottle of Mm -hmm. birthday balsamic, was incredible, but we have a lot of kids that come in and their parents encourage them to try it. And they try it and they're like, I want to try this one. Mm-hmm. What about this one? Mm-hmm. What about this one? So it's, it's a fun, it's a fun thing. Cause you don't know what you don't know until you know. So. Mm-hmm. And also too, don't you, if, if somebody like wants, wants it, um, I think you just said that if somebody wants an olive oil, like with garlic and basil, you can, you can mix that for them. Right. So yes, yeah, so we have a garlic olive oil. And then we have a basil olive oil. If you love the garlic and the basil taste together, we'll mix it for you together in the bottle. If you like the basil olive oil and the strawberry balsamic, we can mix that vinegar, you know, that vinaigrette for you right, right there. I think I tried that uh, strawberry balsamic. I, I um, lo- um, loved it, loved it, but I couldn't think of what to put it on. I was like, would well, I want my chicken to shine like strawberry? <laughs> well, see, and I think that that's the thing because you get a little scared. The dark chocolate is our is a primary example. Mm-hmm. Um, it it seems like it should be. Primarily used for sweets. Yeah. 
But you can use it for savory just like you would. I mean, put it on a caprese salad, people aren't going to know the difference. It's a, it's cacao that's added. So it's just a hint of the chocolate, mm-hmm. um, which can be used in a, in a number of different ways. Um, like the strawberry balsamic, obviously great for the salad dressing. Maybe a little tough for some marinades. Um, but make a cocktail with it. Mm. You know, it's, it's, again, who would think to make a cocktail with, with vinegar, but it's phenomenal. Right. Right. Yeah. And also too, with like uh, vegetables, you know, uh, mixed vegetables or like greens or something like that, add a little, add a little olive oil on top of it or mix it with a little olive oil, just, you know, just for the, to to bring that taste out, you know? Well, we have like my kids when they were little, we had, we had black dip, which was the 18 year age balsamic. Mm -hmm. And then we had white dip, which Mm -hmm. could have been any one of the white balsamics. And I could get them to eat anything with black or white dip, which literally they're just dipping it in the vinegar, which again, it's so good for you, neutralizes the acids in your body, reduces inflammation, the natural probiotics, all of those kinds of things. And like I said, they would eat just about anything with that on it. Well, like when I make that, um, when you um, make the spinach, when you chop up the spinach or whatever, I've got the green stuff you put on. The... Oh, for, I should know. Pesto? That. Yeah, pesto. I'm pesto. like, what are you doing? Pesto, yeah. Well, well, so that's, yeah, so pesto, that's an easy, fun thing to do, too. Mm-hmm. Like, because again, if you don't have... You pine nuts, you can sub it with walnuts, right? Mm-hmm. If you don't have a whole lot of basil, use the basil olive oil. Yeah. You can yeah. really, that'll enhance the flavor tremendously. Or use the oregano olive oil with the, ba- like fresh basil and pine nuts, and you've got an amazing variation of, of pesto. Well, well, I've been very lucky because um, our kids, um, they're not like, because <laughs> I was like, vegetables, ugh, get them away. <laughs> But um, with our kids, like when I make breakfast sandwich, I put some pesto on it and, you know, um, spread it on the bread and then put everything on there. And they're like, what's this green stuff? I'm like, it's just pesto. And they eat it. You know? But well, it, gets them, it gets them to eat spinach, you know. I told my son a very important story yesterday because he used one of my sayings that I said to him ever since I was little. And the saying that he used is you don't have to like it, but you have to try it. And the reason why I came up with my story on before I really had children is I was working at the Courage Center and they had an all, you know, all kinds of dishes and stuff like that. And I'm like, I know what this tastes like. I know what that tastes like. But if I never try that, I might never see it again. So I'm like, okay, I might not like it. But I am going to try it. And I push that forward to my five children. Then Chris comes along, you know, and he, like, enhances their palate. So now he wants to make the more simpler things, and they can't because every time that he asks them, what do you want me to make? Well, I want this with this and this and this. And this. <laughs> I mean, we have the same issue. I mean, literally last night we went to dinner at my brother's house and um, had amazing fried chicken, interestingly enough. And uh, he made a salad. None of my kids eat a salad. And <laughs> my mom goes, well, they should have some salad. I go, I know. We have salad a lot, mm-hmm. but it's not my salad dressing. Mm. You know what I mean? And so I'm sorry, the ranch, yes. Yeah. There, there's, there's a time and a place for ranch. I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. But my kids aren't ranch kids. They're a vinaigrette kid. Right. So yeah. it just doesn't, it doesn't have that same Yep. Taste. Yeah, how many? Um, I think they were twelve or thirteen at the time. What do you want for dinner? Chicken parmesan. What? <laughs> <laughs> but I feel really lucky in that regard because I think so many kids get siloed into being quote unquote picky eaters. Mm-hmm. Um, I do feel really lucky. I I was an experimental. My mom was like, "You try it. You mm-hmm. might like it." Um, and I was shocked at how many things that I did find that I really really liked. Yeah. Um, and that's just it. Like even for kids that are reluctant here, we have a huckleberry white balsamic. It literally tastes like a melted Jolly Rancher for real, for real. And then they're like, I can do this. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. And you can give it to your kid without the guilt of giving them an actual Jolly Rancher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Now I'm going to test you. Chris is going into the strudel business, homemade mm, straight from scratch. Now, what would you add to, mm, they're all fruit. What would what would your best olive or vinaigrette be? Well, the olive oils. Here's the thing: um, if we're going to go plain olive oil, mm-hmm. um, I will always go Spanish. It's my favorite. I think um, it, it's you're just going to taste the olive oil, and it's going to enhance that. That you're never going to go wrong with garlic, mm-hmm. but not everybody is like a huge garlic fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think you could have some 
surprisingly fun like things with like lemon mm. um, and a strudel. Um, yeah, lemon juice. And then as far as the vinegars, I, I would really just say let your taste buds guide you because mm-hmm. like, there's just so many other, there's just so many options. I think the white balsamics are nice because it doesn't stain your food. Mm-hmm. They're aged 20 years, so they're a little bit thicker and syrupier. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can get away with using a little bit less, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so that would be my... So when you said they age 20, year, 20 years, they, they like keep the olives and... Not olives, um, the vinegar. Okay. So the olives, um, depending on the region, um, are harvested once a year, mm-hmm. usually in October, November, and December. Then pressed in December, January, and February, and that's that's it. You get that pressing, you get one harvest, you get that pressing, and you have to wait till the next year to get the new ones. So um, that's the other piece that's kind of nice is it's fun to come in, say, January and February as we start to get the new harvest and mm-hmm. compare, compare them to what last year's tasted like and mm-hmm. those kinds of things. Now, as far as the vinegars are concerned, um, so the, all the balsamics are, are grapes, so they're the Trebbiano and Lambrusco grapes. For the white balsamics, it's a white Trebbiano grape. They macerate those, open air ferment them. And once it gets to the right moldy pH, <laughs> they scrape that off. But then they take that liquid and then they put them in oak and juniper barrels, mm-hmm. where then that's where they're aged 18 years. So our, our, our number one seller is our 18-year age balsamic, and that's 18 years old. The other ones, the fruit balsamics are aged 12 years and then mixed with a true fruit balsamic. And then our white balsamics are aged 20 years. Okay, so when, so when they're sitting in the barrel, do they, do they like move the barrel, turn the barrel like wine or, any, or yes, anything? Yes, they do. It's just exactly, it's like, it's exactly kind of the wine process, okay. but extended because the, the grapes have a higher sugar content. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also it's the natural uh, bacteria in the different regions that um, cause that fermentation process. Mm-hmm. And then that's what adds kind of to the depth and beauty of the, the vinegar. Yeah, because I see it I see it a lot like syrup. Like, you know, when you when you buy the syrups like it, um, you know, I'm talking like, you know, breakfast syrup, when you when you buy it at like cub or whatever, it's like one thing. But when you're like driving you see like this, you know, small store or something like that and you find the real, real maple syrup and you have it mm-hmm. on like pancakes, waffles or French toast or something, you're just like, I, I can't eat this stuff. <laughs> exactly. I, exactly. Yeah. I mean, and that, I think that, that that is true. That is true. Mm-hmm. Um, I was lucky because the balsamic that we have, I grew up on. Mm-hmm. Um, when they was, my mom received it every year after harvest. And so I kept a bottle of vinegar in my purse, who would ever thought. Um, but you do, you get to a point that you're like, Hmm. And I think with, with the way that the world is and the chemicals that we're putting in our food yes. and all of those kinds of things, there's small steps that you can take mm-hmm. um, to enhance your health. And this, this is an easy one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, like, like um, this is, <laughs> this has been a fun conversation and love talking about cooking, love talking about olive oil. And if you guys have a website, you're also on a Facebook page. Mm-hmm. And um, can you tell us, and, and if, and if you got any questions on some good olive oil, where to get, definitely give them a call and they will steer you the right way. And what's your, what's your website or? We're, um, the website is www.vinaigrette. I'm going to spell that though, because um, note to self, don't name your business something that's really difficult to spell. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make sense. But yeah. It's V I N A. I G R E T T E M is in Mary N is in Nancy.com. So vinaigrette MN.com. It has our story on there. It has information about our products and then the capacity to order from there. Um, we're on vinaigrette V I N A I G R E T T E um, M N and you'll get our Facebook page. We also have an Instagram page and we do have a Twitter. I have to say I've been really neglectful of all of those pages. Um, <laughs> And they Social do media is hard to get. <laughs> I mean, even for myself, pushing infusion health and stuff like that, there's so many avenues now for social media. Well, I think the other piece, I have to be honest, the piece for me is I'm a raging extrovert who loves to touch. So COVID came mm-hmm. and it, it like chopped me off at my knees. Yeah. And so to have like a social outreach where it really wasn't getting the social <laughs> outreach um, was a little difficult. Um, but... Uh, I'm getting back into to it. We have a bunch of recipes on our social media page. We have a bunch of recipes on our website. Um, yeah, but and then our like I said, our numbers on all of our bottles. So feel free to give us a call. 
Yeah, and it, and if you um and like I said, if you bring a bottle in, and I think if, you, if what is it, if you buy three, you get one one for half off or something like that. Well, it, not not necessarily, um, <laughs> but um, no. So like, what it is is if you bring us a bottle, and you can bring me a bottle from home. Mm-hmm. I don't, if you bring me your cup bottle of, of olive oil, I'm going to give you a ten percent discount for coming into my store. Um, if you bring a if you bring a bottle from somebody else or someplace else, I'm going to still give you the ten percent discount. So. Um, it is a buy, you know, buy 10, get one free. Um, but we like to extend that discount um, whenever we possibly can. Okay. And, and for people that want to deliver, it's like the milk ban. You put your bottles out. I come. I give you the new bottles. I take your old bottles. And technically, we don't even have to see each other. Mm-hmm. And um, I definitely, definitely highly recommend everybody to come down here and just um, and try try out some of these olive oils because they, they are really good. Mm-hmm. Well, I appreciate hearing that. And I think the other piece is like with our staff, um, Logan's been with us for the, since we've opened and now his daughter um, works for us. So we really are a family run, family <laughs> owned and operated business because um, otherwise it's me um, and, or my husband in the store. And um, once again, make sure you support local businesses. And this is definitely one you definitely should come down and try out and definitely support. And like she said, um, Rachel have um, links. And, All that in the, in, in, the, in the show notes. Yes. But it's definitely worth driving down here to Minneapolis and uh, checking out. And if you and if you're from out of town and you come to Minneapolis, definitely 50th and Xerxes and come down here and check out some of this olive oil. And I will say, if you hear this, if you're listening to this podcast, please let us know and we'll extend a 15 percent discount to you. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you. And uh, again, thanks for doing the show. It, it, it took us it took us a while to connect, but we connected. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, thank you. Have a great one. All right. And I'll let Rach close us out. All right, you guys. History is born on lines of hate. On here, we're trying to build lines of love. Remember, when you are trying out new things, always go with the intent that you might not like it, but you should try it. Have a great one, everyone. Take it easy. 